Hello, Coach Holmes here, and today we're going to be talking about tangent lines and circles. There's actually two different types of theorems that we're going to talk about that has to do with tangent lines. And some of the problems that we may actually see and face when it comes to it. So the big example, again, we're just talking about tangent lines. We're not worried about secant or chords or diameters. We're worried about tangent right now. So for example, the theorem tangent line to a circle is a pretty simple theorem that doesn't really require too much work. It's basically a tangent line, a tangent to a circle if and only if A radius, oh wait, hold on, I'm sorry. If and only if the line is perpendicular to the radius. Okay, so we do have to know, so we do have to keep in mind about radius, but it's a pretty simple idea. So let's say that's my tangent line right here, okay? What this actually states is that if I have a radius to the point of the tangent, tangent line, it's actually gonna be perpendicular, okay? And the, problem, and the sample problems we're gonna work with, they're actually gonna be making right triangles so we can use Pythagorean theorem to find distances and find the lengths. So that's why it's very important because if we know it's a right angle, it actually helps us out to solve different problems. And I'll give you one, and I'll give you a couple of examples in a minute. Now, theorem external tangent congruency. Another simple idea is that two tangent secant segments, I mean. Two tangent segments from wait form a common point. Let me try this one. Two tangent segments that form a common point are congruent. All right. So what does that mean exactly? Well, if I have a circle right here, this is about a long shot. So if I have these two intersecting at the circle once, and they both happen to be segment because they form a common point right here, these two segments are actually going to be congruent to each other. Okay? So, so I have two segment tangent lot, two, ten, ah, excuse me, I'm very sorry. Two tangent segments that are actually gonna be equal to each other. That's very important to keep in mind. If these two are segments, and as long as they're both tangent, they're gonna be congruent to each other, okay? That's very important, it's very simple to figure out. Now, let's try some of these samples real quick. Let's try some of these samples. Now, notice here, I have a, I have a tangent line right there. And I know I missed shot it, but I'll draw it again. There we go. I have that tangent line. But notice I have the radius here. If you remember our last theor first theorem, a tangent line to a circle, a tangent is to the circle if and only if the line is perpendicular. So that means that I have a right angle here. Now notice I make a triangle, so I have a right triangle. So therefore, I can actually use Pythagorean theorem to solve for x. 
So what can I do? Well, I know that six gotta be eight, B's gotta be tw X, I'm thinking of heads. And then the 10 is C. So I know that six squared is 36 plus X squared equals 100. Subtract 36 from both sides. That cancels out. X squared equals 64. And of course, to get rid of a square, I gotta take the square root of it. Square root of 64 is eight. So I know X has to be eight. And that's how I'll be able to solve it. Now let's look at the second example right here. Now, I'm trying to solve for X. But notice that I don't have this whole thing. I only have this part right here. But if you remember about radius is that the radius is gonna be the same all the way around the circle. So if I know that this is 12 right here, let me try a different color. Here we go. If I know this is 12, that has to be 12 as well. So the whole length of this is actually 20. Now, where is the right angle? Remember, it's from the radius to the tangent line. So I know that 20 has to be C. So I have 12 squared plus X squared. I know 12 squared is 144. 20 squared is 400. I believe, yeah, it should be 400. Subtract 144 to both sides x squared equals 256. Take the square root of that. That gives me x equals 16. Sorry, forgot to take the square root of it. But if I take the square root of 256, that gives me the value of x equals 16. All right. So even with problems like that, as long as we think through about it, we should be able to solve it. We just gotta remember that even if I don't have this length, if I know what the radius is, I should be able to be good to go. Now, let's look at this. So notice I have two tangent segments right there. Well, in our previous theorem, the, the last theorem, two tangent segments that form a common point are congruent. So I know that these two are congruent right here. So what can I do with those two to solve for x? Set them equal to each other. So I'm going to say 2x minus 4 equals 10. All right. Now, what can I do with the 4? I add 4 to both sides. So that gives me 2x equals 14. I got to divide 2 to both sides. And that gives me x equals 7. Okay? And that's how I'll be able to solve for x. Now for this right here, same idea. I have two tangent segments, so they're going to both congruent to each other. So I'm going to set them equal to each other. So I'm going to add 7 to both sides, so 5x equals 30, divide by 5 to both sides, x equals 6. So that, so the value of x here is actually going to be 6. Now the biggest thing we got to remember is that if I have a tangent line, that's going to be perpendicular to the radius which eventually I can actually solve for right triangles using Pythagorean theorem. And if I have two tangent segments and they form a common point, they're actually congruent to each other. And we should be able to set them equal to each other in order to solve for x.
Thank you and have a good day.